Hey, good morning, Summit. This is Edward, and this is Jake. And Happy New Year. This is your new weekly update. Hey, I do want to say this is going to be a little different update today. We normally cut up and mess with each other and do some stuff like that, but I do want to take a minute today and address what happened in our nation yesterday. But before we do that, we do have a couple of things we want to mention to you, uh, specifically about Summit, some things that are coming up. And so, Jake, why don't you uh, mention a couple of things real quick. New year, new times. I know we had a little break for Christmas and for New Year's, and uh, but, man, we're rolling again. Last night was Wednesday night. Our youth met again. So if you got kids, 6th through 12th grade, Great they're crowd. meeting on Wednesday nights. And Ashley had her Kid Ventures small groups. And so they rotate those. So you'll need to get in touch with Ashley about what grades are meeting on one read, Wednesday read nights. Read your emails. You'll get an email from yeah. Ashley every week. That's she right. lets you know those I got one. schedule. So. I, I'm married to her, and I get the email every week. So... Yeah, a lot of cool things happening. We're going to be relaunching small groups on the 31st. Still gathering that. all of our small group leaders and things of that nature. So if you're interested, please reach out to me at jake at summitheightsfellowship.com. Also, our re-engaged ministry, we've got some couples. That's our marriage ministry. That's our, it's it's hey. awesome. I was going to get to that. Man. Okay, man. I'm just making no, sure. Make sure, make sure, make sure. A little role reversal there with uh, the interruptions. No, I'm just kidding, man. Uh, yeah, so our marriage enrichment. And so uh, what's really cool about Reengage is you'll have a lot of different couples in, in one of the classes. And you, you may have a marriage that's fallen apart. You may have a marriage that literally, like, uh, divorce papers may be in the console of the car. And we've seen that yeah, before. We've seen couples come through that class and reignite their marriage and make new commitments. But you also may have a couple, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, they're like a 7. But they want to be a 9 or a 10. So they go through the course as well. And so... If you want to be a part of that, reach out to us. Uh, we've got behind the scenes, we're getting some leaders ready for that as well. So that'll relaunch as well with our small group ministry. So uh, just a minute, it's an exciting time. I've, new Year's, man, I've made some New Year's commitments this year, Edward. I'm excited about seeing if I can keep them. Yeah, that's good. Hey, January 17th too, that's a week from Sunday. We're going to be um, giving you an opportunity to sign up to some service areas. Uh, we've got all kinds of things that go on. Children, preschool, youth, first impressions, food ministry, uh, media, uh, online church, uh, all kinds of ways that you can serve. And so we want you to be aware of that. And uh, even if you're still staying at home uh, because of all the stuff that's going on right now with the pandemic and COVID, there's even ways you can serve from home uh, on our online uh church so be looking for that that'll be january the 17th so you got anything else today yeah one more thing i almost forgot our uh grief support mm. will not meet this sunday it'll meet on the 17th it usually meets on the second sunday of the month for january we're meeting on the third sunday of the month yeah so is that it yeah i think so yeah. uh so let me let me address what happened yesterday. Um, I, I think for a lot of you, what you saw on TV yesterday and, and what I saw on TV, Jake and I were just talking about it, um, was just an incredible day. And I'm so grateful uh, for the men and women who serve uh, in politics. You've heard me say that before, uh, that those men and women serve at the pleasure of our country, and we're grateful for those guys. I'm grateful for the law enforcement. Um, people who risked their lives even yesterday. Incredible day. Uh, I'm grateful for those men and women who serve and as leaders in the political arena. Uh, and I do have notes here, so I want you to know I'm, I'm staying on track here because I want to be very pointed in, in what I address. I want to give you some encouragement. Uh, I am, however, um, very seldom involved in politics. Uh, first and foremost, let me tell you why. Uh, I don't address a lot of political things from the stage. I don't address a lot of political things, uh, period, because my calling is a pastor. First and foremost, uh, I am a pastor. I am sure of that calling. And so as my goal as a pastor is to always point you to Jesus, always point you to Jesus. He is my Lord. He is my master. And I only do what he says. And I, and, and that's my goal. And I and I don't, I'm not perfect in that in any way, shape, or form, but I always want to point you to Jesus. But let me give you two other reasons why I don't wade into politics is I never want people who don't share my political views or my social views 
to think that I'm better than them or that I'm less than them because the moment that happens, I instantly lose my credibility as a witness and a follower of Jesus Christ. He is my Lord. And number two, I'm just going to be honest with you. When it comes to politics, I'm not even sure I'm right in the first place, Jake, uh, on so much because I don't have all the details. I don't have everything. And so uh, I just don't wade into that. I, I want to point people to Jesus because that's what I am sure of is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And when I let Jesus be Lord of my life, I am incredibly free, just simply, <laughs> to be a servant. I'm, I'm the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, when I let him be the Lord of my life, it is incredible the amount of peace and the rest that comes because he's in control and I trust him. And, and even when I'm fearful, even when I'm seeing things that just cause me to scratch my head and we, what's going on, I trust him because he's my Lord. He's my master. And so yesterday, I'm going to be honest with you, was shocking and sad. I don't know that I've ever seen a day like this in history. Um, it's been many, many, many years since we've seen anything like this in America. And I know some of you who are listening to this today, um, you were and you are fearful. And I get it. Uh, I, I cannot tell you yesterday that that didn't cross my mind. And yet I know there's another side of that coin. That there's some of you out there that thought yesterday needed to happen. And because I love you, I want to say something to you. And, and I want to... Uh, address this. I'm not going to say a whole lot about it. I just, I just want to say this. I love you. There's a right way to appeal authority and there's a wrong way to appeal authority. And yesterday was the wrong way to appeal authority. And I would refer you to Romans chapter 13, 1 Peter chapter 2. I would refer you to Jesus who lived in one of the most corrupt governments in the history of mankind and look at his response. Now, for those of you who are fearful, either because of yesterday or because of this ongoing pandemic, we see these numbers rising, we see deaths rising, we see all those things. And I know there's all kinds of thoughts around that. Let me say this, I always, always, always wanna point you to Jesus. He is our example. Over and over again in scripture, scripture says, fear not, fear not. It's the most repeated command in the Bible. In fact, it's been said there's 365 fear nots in the Bible, one fear not for every day of the year. Lloyd John Ogilvie said this in Facing the Future Without Fear, that there's 366 fear nots, not only for every day of the Bible, but for every day of the year, but even for one in the leap year uh, in that. And so God doesn't want us to go a single day in fear. He, he, he wants us to go every day and hear him say, fear not. Fear not. In fact, Isaiah 41.10 says, don't panic. Fear not. I am with you. There's no need to fear for I am your God. And that's from the message version. And I love that. Don't panic. I'm, I, I'm with you. God says, I've got this. I, I'm there. I'm your God. In the Old Testament, the psalmist often leads in prayers of fear not. You, you look at the Psalms and it's that great soul book. Uh, meant to train us how to respond when difficult feelings, because these feelings and these things are going in. It's on both sides of the coin of that. For some of us that are fearful and some of us felt like that should happen, what do we do with those feelings? How do we handle those feelings? And I love the Psalms because the Psalms is that is that emotional book. It's, it's where David teaches us and the psalmist teaches us how to handle our feelings and to be emotionally honest in prayer pointing you to Jesus. Again, we're trusting the Lord as we love one another. We're trusting him as we walk through this season of our life. And in fact, in Psalms 56, David has been seized by the Philistines. David has been in war and he finds himself uh, being trapped by the Philistines. He's in a situation that's uncontrollable. He's in a situation that he is about to die. And, and instead of being afraid, David does something very remarkable here. He sets his vision on the Lord and the Savior in his midst. He sets his vision on the Father. In fact, he praises God in his word. Listen to his words in Psalms 56, 3 and 4. He says, when I'm afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God I trust, I will not be afraid. 
what can mortal man do to me? And if you read on to that in verses 10 and 11, he repeats that again. So what fear is trying to take hold of us today? As you're thinking through what happened yesterday or maybe over the last few months, again, on both sides of that coin, wherever you fall, it's, it's, it's that fear that comes into our hearts. What's trying to threaten us right now? Uh, what, whatever we're facing, that maybe we would take the same stance as David prayed. When David says, when I'm afraid, and you fill in the blank, when I'm afraid, you fill in the blank, that we would come to that place as Christ followers, the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that we would simply say, I will trust in you, O Lord. I'll trust in you. And church, I encourage you right now, in this season, as crazy as this is, that you'll put your trust in the Lord, not, not in a system, not in a country, not in a man, not in anything else, but you put your trust in the Lord. Someone, I love you. We love you. And we're praying for you uh, as we respond in a way that would honor King Jesus. He is the Lord of our life. Uh, when he suffered, I was reading this morning in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, that when he suffered, he didn't retaliate. Think about that. He trusted and submitted to the Father who always judges fairly. We trust in the Lord. I love you, Summit. And I'm praying for you. I know Jake's praying for you. We are praying for you during this season. And um, we know that there's many differing opinions, but we're praying for you during this season. Remember this. I preached it last Sunday. He is the Lord of our life. I'm going to be coming back to that this Sunday again that it is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I want to point you to Jesus. I cannot wait to see you this Sunday to join with you, either in person or online. For you guys that are still at home, we're praying for you, and we cannot wait to see you. We'll see you Sunday.